Welcome guys, David here again with another VTech. And 5G has finally arrived in the UK with EE switching on the next generation service and offering up a selection of the very latest handsets. These 5G handsets will be capable of incredible speed with them being able to download as much as a gigabyte of data in just over three seconds. Available to buy today is the Samsung Galaxy S10 5G, the OnePlus 7 Pro 5G, the Oppo Reno 5G, the LG ThinQ V50, and the Xiaomi Mi Mix 3 5G. Only available from EE and Vodafone at the moment, but you can check the Direct Mobile's website and compare all of the available deals for 5G handsets right now. As usual, I've got to say a big thank you to Direct Mobiles for looking after us here at BTECT. They have over 24 years of award-winning customer service, so if you want a 5G handset, it's definitely worth checking out their deals. Their link is in the video description below, or you can search directmobiles.co.uk. It's early days yet, but once properly up and running, the 5G network will be more about than just being able to download your favorite movie like it's a JPEG. It's going to change everything. 5G can operate at both low and high frequencies, and the EE rollout occupies the lower end of the frequency band, up to around about 3.6 gigahertz. It is said that 5G can operate up to 26 gigahertz, but even at the comparatively low 3.6, network speeds will still be around 100 times of what 4G can provide. Huge investments have been made by the networks, although mostly 5G will look the same as the 4G infrastructure, with the same kind of transmission mask that we're used to seeing dotted around the place. But for 5G, there's also a massive network of transmitters hidden away in lampposts and on top of buildings, which will boost the signal and eliminate any loss of connection. It should be even able to allow providers to give guarantees about having a permanently connected device. The networks themselves should be able to handle 1,000 more devices per square meter, and this should eliminate the problem of network blockages in area where there's large crowds, such as music events. Latency is going to drop by 98%, which is great news for gamers because it will mean almost zero lag, ever. You'll also be able to stream high-end games rather than having to download them, and even long-distance video calls will not have any kind of noticeable delay. In a few years, we'll see everything from taxis to supermarkets becoming fully automated. It's the low latency and the reliability of the ultra-fast 5G connection that would allow this to happen. Cars will be able to drive from A to B because they know exactly where they are at all times and get the data almost with no delay. And we will see more and more home-connected devices as the Internet of Things becomes more of a thing. But as I see it right now, the problem with 5G for consumers is the cost. Looking on the Direct Mobile's website, Prices for 5G handsets from EE and Vodafone, well, they're not that much more than what you would be paying for a 4G deal. For example, the Oppo Reno 5G is £64 a month with £50 up front and 30 gigs of data, which seems fine, but you're going to have to be really careful with those 30 gigs. Don't go downloading loads of films on Netflix. With a good 5G connection, you should be able to download one of those movies in about three seconds. Download 30 movies and that's your data gone in 30 seconds. This problem was accidentally highlighted by a BBC film crew when they were testing their 5G connection by doing a live broadcast and taking advantage of the low latency so there would be no delay between them asking questions, as you usually see on the news. The trouble is with their test transmissions, they ate up all their data and had to top up. And right now, nobody is offering unlimited data packages. Surprise, surprise. But here's the funny, ironic thing. We were supposed to be doing this live broadcast about 15 minutes ago, uh, and the whole system went down. Turned out we'd run out of data on the SIM card inside our box of tricks. And that goes to show just how much data you might be chewing up with one of these new 5G phones. The same thing happened when we went from 3G to 4G. Unlimited 3G data plans were quite common because you could only use so much data in one day. Then when we switched to 4G, none of the tariffs were unlimited. But when you're able to use this much data with 5G, then an unlimited plan would be really useful. And I'm wondering how long it will be before we start to see them. I really love that we're seeing this huge jump in technology. And out of the amazing choice of 5G handsets that we have at the moment, there is one that is missing, and that's the Mate 20X 5G from Huawei. You should be able to buy a Mate 20X 5G right now, as its launch was officially announced by Huawei a few weeks ago, but it has been postponed from the lineup of both the 5G providers in the UK, primarily because UK suppliers don't want to offer a handset that potentially in a few months will not see any further updates from Google. This of course is down to Huawei being blacklisted by the US government, which prevents any US company from dealing with Huawei. For me, the Mate 20X is probably the best handset that Huawei make at the moment. 
It has a great 7.2 inch screen and excellent stereo speakers, which makes it my favorite device for gaming. So a 5G version of this phone would have only made one of my favorite handsets even better. But perhaps worse than that is that we were supposed to see the launch of the Foldin Mate X in the next few weeks. So far there's been no news on what Huawei will do concerning this release. I am on the case and as soon as I find out any information, I'll let you guys know. The consequences of this are much further reaching than just a few phones not being released. This battle between the US and the Chinese government with Huawei in the middle is over who gets to roll out 5G to the world. It's been likened to the space race and there's a lot of money at stake for whichever economy comes in first. Until then, we'll have reviews of the 5G handsets and the Sony Xperia 1 is on the way, so make sure that you hit subscribe, double tap the notifications and smash the like button for me so you don't miss any future episodes. If you're on social media, then you can follow me on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. It's at BTEC or add me on Snapchat, david.btech. Thanks for watching. My name's David. This is BTEC.